You mean it's actually here? Yeah, now we can finally make that pizza. That's right. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Because today, we're going to teach you how to make the most requested, highly anticipated, authentic Lou Malnati's deep dish pizza right in your own home oven. This dough is so easy to make, you don't even need a stand mixer. So you can just take your old mixing bowl and throw it out. All we really need for this dough is a bowl and a spoon. Now we're gonna add our flour to the bowl. I like to use Hecker's or Sarasota flour. It's the Chicagoland favorite. Now we're gonna add our dry ingredients. First the yeast goes in, and now we add our salt, and finally our sugar. Now we're just gonna mix these up. And now we're gonna add our wet ingredients. First our water goes in, then our corn oil, and finally our olive oil. And now to mix this, we're just going to take our good sturdy spoon and we're going to first start around the edges and just pull all the flour in towards the center. Our goal is to try to get all this flour hydrated with liquid. And we've got to remember that some of the flour is on the very bottom of the pan and so we want to kind of press the bottom of it as we mix it. And now we're just going to keep folding the flour in on itself and make sure that we get all the liquid incorporated into the flour. And once you get your dough to about this point, just get all the extra dough off your spoon and from here on out we can just use our hands. You don't want to overwork this dough, it's kind of like a pie dough, it's really rich and fat. So your dough should start to come together like this. You don't want to have too many of these big crevices, so you're just going to kind of want to pinch them together and fold them over. And this is where the art of making dough kind of comes in. Some doughs are going to be drier than others, some climates are drier than others. So if you find that you've worked with this dough for a little while and you still have these uh, big crevices, what you can do is just add a couple little drops of water in here and that'll really help to tighten it up. And just kind of press that together and fold it in and that's going to really improve the overall texture of the dough. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just should be a kind of a nice dough ball that will hold together. So once you have it pressed together, you can go around and just kind of pinch all these little crevices together. And since we added that moisture, it's staying together a lot better now. Now we're going to let this dough rest for 24 hours covered with some plastic wrap. Now we're just going to move our dough to our work surface. And this dough makes enough for two pizzas. We're going to divide it roughly in half. Each portion of dough should weigh roughly 12 ounces for our 9 inch pan. The exact measurements for all these recipes, remember, are in the video description. For our Illuminati sauce, we're going to use a can of whole tomatoes and a can of crushed tomatoes. So the first step in making our sauce is just to strain out our tomatoes. And now we'll just add about a half of a teaspoon of salt. Now it's really important that you take the time to drain out all the excess liquid from these tomatoes. Because if you don't, your pizza is going to be too wet and nobody likes a soggy pizza. Now with our crushed tomatoes we're just going to take a spoon and just kind of stir in that salt real well and this will actually help all the excess liquid to push down through the strainer leaving us with a nice thick sauce. Now with our whole peeled tomatoes we're going to get our nice clean hands in here and we're just going to start kind of crushing them up. We don't want them to be totally shredded but we just kind of want some big chunks left and this also is going to help to drain out all that excess liquid. There's a lot of people watching our video right now who aren't subscribed so if you're one of those please take a second right now and click that subscribe button. Also, if you press the like button, it tells YouTube that our video content is appreciated and it helps to promote it to other users. All right, let's go ahead and open up this special box that we got directly from Lou Molnati's. And here's our 9-inch pan. Molnati's uses a pan made by Chicago Metallic. And this is a 9-inch pan with a 1.5-inch rim. And the number on it is 4915X. Oh, so this is the pan we're going to use to make the pizza? Yes, it is. This is the one we just got from Molnati's. But there's only one problem with it. What is that? It's not seasoned yet. Then how are we going to season it? Easy. Just like this. Wow, Dad, you're really good at that. OK, now we're ready to press this dough into the pan. We're going to take a little bit of olive oil, and we're just going to put a little bit on the bottom of the pan like this. And one thing we don't want to do is get it on the edges, because if you put it on, on the edges, it's not going to stick. Now we're just going to gently lay our dough into the pan, and we're going to start pressing it out. Start from the center and work your way around. So the key to make a good Malnati's pizza is to make sure that it's not too thick. So we're gonna press it down so it's really flat. And once we have it all the way to the edges, then we're gonna grab the edges and we're gonna start working it around the sides. And we want the sides to be almost paper thin. People get the wrong idea about Chicago deep dish. They think it's like a really thick bread, but actually the most iconic deep dish pizzas are quite a thin crust. Once you've got it up all the way around the edge, you're ready for your toppings. All right, now we're ready to add our cheese to our pizza. The cheese goes right on the bottom of the dough and will serve as the foundation of our pizza. This is a really good cheese that I got at the deli, and it's a low-moisture mozzarella. Next, we're going to add our homemade sausage. 
You're gonna to wanna to use a mild Italian sausage with this. And at Malnati's, they don't add any fennel seed to their sausage. Okay, now we have all the sausage laid out on the pizza. Notice we put plenty of sausage on there, but we did leave some space in between the pieces of sausage. And that's on purpose, is so the cheese as it melts can kind of bubble up in between all the pieces of sausage and all the flavors can melt together. All right, now we're gonna add our beautiful tomato sauce on, right on top of the sausage. This is the crushed tomatoes. If it's actually too thick, you can get a little bit of your leftover juice and add some of that back into it. So now we can start spreading it around evenly. We'll get a little bit more. And now we're gonna take some beautiful chunks from our whole tomato and we're gonna add that to the mix too. Just like that. And then we're just gonna use our hands to spread it all out. This is the way they do it at the restaurant. And the final touch before it goes into the oven is a little bit of Romano cheese with a little bit of oregano and Italian seasoning added. And now we're ready to put it into the oven. Middle rack at 450 degrees. Okay, it has been about 25 minutes. We're gonna check on the pizza and see how it's coming. Normally these are gonna cook for about 25 to 35 minutes. The interior of this pizza takes quite a long time to cook and sometimes it takes longer for the inside to cook than it does for the crust. So I'm gonna take a little piece of foil and just put it right over the top of it like that and that's gonna protect our crust from burning while still allowing the interior to cook. We'll probably leave it here for about another 10 minutes. All right, let's take a look and see how it's doing. So I left it in for another 10 minutes covered and it needed a little bit more time. So this is another five minutes uncovered. And I think it's just right. Now, if you want to, you can serve it in the pan and cut it right where it is. But I like to try to get it out of the pan so I can really see what the crust looks like. Plus that allows the crust to get more crispy. So I'm gonna take a real thin little spatula and just kind of go around the edge here. Really doesn't stick very much because it's a, such a fatty dough. And we'll take a look at the bottom and the sides. It looks about right. With it all freed up, I'm gonna use a bigger spatula and try to get underneath it. Okay, let's go ahead and get this pizza cut. All right, let's take a look at the bottom of one of these slices. Golden brown, just the way we want it. Look at that. All right, that's gonna conclude our Lumonati's video. We hope that you enjoyed it, and we hope that you try this at home. You won't be disappointed. Until next time, pizza out. Mm.